everyone! Welcome to the third and final episode of UCAMP 2020. We've had a lot of fun so far and can't wait to share these last videos with you. Uh, to celebrate the occasion, I am wearing my favorite bright orange new camp shirt with my favorite matching trailer leggings. Don't ask me where I got them because they were a gift. And I'm trying not to go blind by staring directly into the shirt. Kind of like staring at the sun. So let's jump right into it. One of my favorite things at UCAMP is meeting and talking to all the other female campers out there. And luckily we have a lot of really knowledgeable women out there. So here's some advice for our female campers. For women traveling solo, a few safety tips. Some things that I do, I always bring two chairs along and set them both up outside of my tag. And that way it gives the appearance that there's either two people camping or that someone might be joining me. Another thing I do is I keep pepper spray on my camper keys and keep those on a wristlet so that I have them with me at all times. And then the third thing is I bring my dog and she's very alert and would let me know if anybody is approaching. But outside of safety, other tips I would have would just be to get out there and do it and have fun. Um, don't be afraid to go solo. It's exciting and adventurous and go do it. You know, I, I think women travelers worry about the what ifs and you just can't worry about the what ifs. You figure out what's really hard for you or what you think maybe makes you the most nervous and then just conquer it. One of the biggest things we hear about is backing up a trailer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know how to get good at backing up a trailer? How? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Practice. And then do it again. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be like real skillful at anything. You just have to practice. That's probably my biggest tip for women travelers. Good tip? Yeah, get really comfortable with it. I have two pieces of advice for female campers, especially if you're going solo. Um, as a lot of you know, I used to travel solo, even though I'm with Kendrick now. The first piece of advice is a little bit vague, but basically I want you to trust your gut. Know that you can do it, but also don't be stupid about it. If a place doesn't feel right, a person, um, a situation that you're in doesn't feel right, then just leave and get yourself out of it. The second piece of advice I have for you is to set your expectations to know that something's going to go wrong. It is. You're gonna break down, you're gonna get lost, something's going to happen. And that way, when that thing does happen, you expected it and you just say, okay, I knew this was gonna happen and I can deal with it. And just having the right mindset is gonna make all the difference in the world. Every year at UCAMP, one of my main goals is to pet every single dog that I see. And I mean every single one of them. <laughs> so let's take a look at all of the dogs that I will not be able to pet this year. We're going to play you uh, an old time fiddle tune called Whiskey Before Breakfast. If you play it on a Sunday, you can call it Spirit in the Morning. Hi, New Camp family. It's Jen Grover and Rocky. Rocky's a five and a half year old Shisu who I've had since he was a pup. He loves to go camping and some of you have met him at campgrounds and you camp and other places and he thinks every tab is his tab so he tries to sneak in them. Um, if you haven't met Rocky in person you can follow him on Instagram. His account is have Rocky will travel. Hi everybody my name's Sydney Strasser and this is my sidekick Bindi. Stay safe and always remember Bindi's rules of social distancing. Keep two big fluffy dogs of space. That's six feet or eight big paws. Hi everyone, this is Al. James behind the camera. This is Caesar. This is our little dog. He's a chihuahua. He's six pounds and he's a rescue. Anyway, <laughs> what are you doing Caesar? We're going to do some tricks for you, okay? Paw. Up. Down. Bed, <laughs> roll over, turn around, turn around, good boy, all right, and that's it. This is my little fur baby, Polly. She is a 19 month old Newfoundland, and her special thing is she is just a little love bug who is currently dying because it is fairly warm in this part of Canada right now. 
This is Harley. She's a four-year-old blue Weimaraner. She's currently doing what she does best, which is keeping our property safe from awful things like birds and squirrels and cats and bunnies and deer and anything else that might try to come into our yard. We bring her camping and she does the same in our campsite. Here's Duke. Duke is a 10 month old golden retriever and um, he's still in puppyhood. So, um, and his favorite toy is his green ball. We can't wait for him to go camping. He has a little bit of a trouble traveling. He's not too keen on getting in the car, but we're just gonna bring him. This is Bob Smith from Paris Mountain State Park, South Carolina. Got my Tab 320 out back. Got the dog Bentley. Hey Bentley. Hey Bentley. I have a little critter that he's probably going to be in here in this in the camper sleeping. He has decided that he really enjoys their conditioning. Say hi, Boondock. Good boy. Yeah. Sorry to bother you. Hi, you campers and others who will see this. This is Verna Schultz, and we have Sunny Day, who is uh, sitting and looking around. Guido decided to lay down and look at the floor instead of looking at Mom. Let's see, Sunny Day is a full-blooded Shih Tzu. She's 10 years old. She's my little, little sweetheart. She really is. Guido is a Shih Tzu mix. He's eight years old. He's a rescue, and he's had a rough life. Whether it's the painted desert or taking a shower at U Camp 19, Miles loves to go camping. He's a Yorkie Poo, and he's 13 years old. He hopes to see everyone in 2021. You want to go camping? Yeah? Okay. We will. Hi, this is Maggie Seabolt. Well, she belongs to Barb and Tom Seabolt. She's going to show you some tricks. This is her saying her prayers. Come on, that's a girl. Hi, this is Maggie again, all ready for bed. This is her new pajamas, and she has a matching bed for it. Hi, this is Maggie again on a rainy day. Here's Maggie wearing her sunglasses on a sunny day. This is Sugar. She is our Princess Craft shop dog. She has come to work every day for the past 10 years and made sure, here you go baby girl, to guard all of our precious new camp trailers. There you go, Sugar. And one of my favorite things to do every year is walk around and have all of you guys show me your amazing campers. So here's some advice from your fellow campers. It could be anything from mods to great accessories that you should buy. And I'm from Michigan and this is my camper joy and I wanted to show some of my favorite decorations that I've put up this year. The first one are my butterflies right here and I put them up with command strips. Then I also put up some string lights and made shades for them. The other thing I did was I put up some magnetic holders and you can put in flowers or um, you can put in spatulas, utensils, whatever you've got. There's lots of different designs. I have always found it to be a little bit uncomfortable when I pull up to a campground. I set up my camper, I turn on my air conditioner, and the next thing I know, the site that I'm sitting on is soaking wet. So uh, that's coming from the drain on the air conditioning system. One of the things I'd like to show you is my feeble attempt to fix that problem. So here we are. I took a short piece of uh, drain hose. I put the 90 on it. I put it right under where the water is coming down. It's gonna come follow this pipe out to right here. It's gonna go into the grass and we will Water the grass for the state of Texas while we're sitting at this park. And now our wet bath has a Richard cubby. The shelf slides in and we have room to store paper goods. Now that we have all of our solar panels installed on the roof and we have a 200 amp hour lithium battery. So now we're ready for weeks of dry camping like we've been doing before. Thank you. This mod that we like, Richard, got rid of the air conditioner, and voila, more storage. This is Joyce Van. I wanted to share a seasoning storage tip. 
I purchased lip balm containers and I also bought some of those earth magnets and I paired them. So on the back side we have the earth magnet that I glued and then on the front I have a label and I put uh, my seasonings inside and then I attach it to the front of my refrigerator. We found the light on the Jensen stereo unit to be too bright on a dark night and in addition to that when we were just running off battery it was unnecessarily running the battery down. I installed a toggle switch so that we could turn the entire power off to our stereo unit. So I installed the switch here and wired it in. So now it's on and now it's off. Steven is a woodworker and he made this lovely paper towel holder for us. Uh, he took a piece of poplar and he uh, made a paper template of the curve of the roof. He screwed it in on either side into the wood. And so uh, we just attached a regular paper towel holder to it. There was extra room, so he also attached these hooks, which makes a great place to put, put a, a coat at night. And we also have another one of those hooks right there. For people who travel by themselves and need to uh, level their trailer when they get to the campsite, I have installed a thing called a LevelMate Pro. And it's inside the trailer just underneath the table. And when I get to a campsite using my uh, smartphone, either Android or OS, I'm able to level the trailer alone as long as there's no more than four inches of deflection between the passenger and the driver's side. So if you're a first time user or you travel alone, this is a way to level the trailer without a lot of problems. Hi ho, it's David here at First Light Farm with a recommendation to get a USB powered fan for your trailer to move air around without using a lot of electricity. And here's what mine looks like. It has two speeds, wicked fast and not so fast. In any case, it keeps the air moving, doesn't use a lot of electricity, can run all night and you wouldn't even know the, notice the battery loss. Hopefully this helpful. I want to talk to you a little about safety about the ball mount on the back of your tow vehicle. This ball should not be easily turnable when you grab hold of it. And that's because there is a split ring just here beneath the nut and the ball. When you look down and you see this, that's bad because that means that the nut can fall off and the ball can jump out. So what you need to do is get a couple of wrenches or take it to a quality place and have them tighten the nut so it looks like this. This is something that Mandy turned me on to. It's the Accurite weather station. So I've got a sensor in the freezer, I've got one in the refrigerator, and I've got one in the tub, which I'll show you. But what's really different from my system and Mandy's system, this is powered by a USB plug. That black wire you see is tucking in right here, goes in through a hole and into my USB center. I stored the uh, sensor for outside in the tub. This is a nice easy way, it's out of this way, um, seems to work just fine. So this is version two of my tab 400 cushion hold-up system. Basically version two is some better command holders and some color coordinated 24 inch bungees. The key to making it work is the larger command hook strips. These have been in place all winter long, so they've been up for six months. Really quick, easy way of getting rid of the cushion. This is my upgraded Max Air 7000K fan. Um, it comes with remote control. Um, this part is it's got a motor so it opens and closes. Um, you can actually set a thermostat. What you're hearing is the motor raising up, opening the vent, turning it on. It's on 10%. I estimate this to be half as noisy as the Fantastic Fan was. And honestly, I think about the same amount of airflow. My name's Cheryl, and I'm in my tab 320 CSS, and this year's modification that I had my husband make me is this shelf over here. I had him make that so we have a place to put different things, a place for the dog bowls underneath, and it makes a nice little handy shelf. I'm going to have him put a door on it later and a drawer up here on the top, about that big of a drawer, you know, so it will be really, really nice. In the bed area of R400, using command products, I have hooks and a small wire basket to hold pen and paper. At Office Depot, I found a hard plastic bin that holds the things this crawlover spouse thinks of after I'm already settled in. 
It also gives me a place to hold that last drink before lights out with no fear of spilling. At the foot of our 400 bed is a mounted wire basket idea I saw from one of your videos, Mandy. We used only one, centered it underneath to ensure the lower counter extension was unaffected, and I could still comfortably wrestle the mattress when changing sheets. The treasure box of liquors on the shelf above is transported in the bathroom floor, but at setup, I transfer to here with a felt bottom to protect the shelf. In the 400's open cubby, I downsized a cardboard magazine holder for dish towels, and I also hold the glass coffee pot, cereals, and chips up here. I change up the food variety, so I'll add a post-it note to let my husband know what's up there as he forages for snacks. All those colorful collected cosmetic giveaway bags I use to, ho to house those shelf-hogging grooming things. This is a Kleenex hand towel box here, and in the window is a trunk translucent film to aid daytime light and privacy so the shade can stay open. My husband also put a flow restricting valve to limit toilet flush flow. When boondocking, I added some water squirt bottles to rinse instead to save even more on the black water. I cut a custom rug using outdoor fabric, but the small runner and entry rug found at Dollar General works just as well. My husband made a shoe rack with coat hangers drilled on wood and then mounted with screws. A strip of plastic shelf liner protects the top shelf, and the hanging flip-flop holder made from remnant outdoor fabric is held up by a strip of heavy-duty Velcro stripping adhesive. My husband also reversed the hinges to aid in getting things out of the small seat compartment. To watch live TV when we are out or downloaded movies through my Galaxy Note 9 smartphone, I purchased a Screen Beam Mini 2 by Action Tech, and it is just connected by an HDMI cord to the port in the back of the monitor. This is a shot of our Frawley system in our 2018 Tab 400. I found I was getting hip pain and low back. I contacted Frawley, and they have these red clips that you can just snap easily on the middle of the blue squares, and it gives you more firm support. Also, the mattresses come in three sections on this year model and I changed up instead of three vertical sections laying I put two horizontal and then put the third vertical at the foot of this that improved and no more uh, hip or back pain. And Here's some thoughts for those that are new to camping. One is a thermal close cell uh, seat which is very lightweight and it's great for if you've got a wet bench to sit on and then these are handy and lightweight, putting up antennas or whatever, great. And then something as simple as a tray, just taking things in and out at dinner time. We haven't done too much moving in, but we do have our friend um, who made me this beautiful little quilt when we were dreaming about having little Joe. And I've had that quilt for like two or three years now waiting. But what I've done is I've rolled up a memory foam mattress topper and I cut it to fit the contours of when the kitchen is made up into the bed. I tie it real tight with a couple of straps and then I put it in a king size pillowcase and it works great. The other thing um, that I've done is in the bathroom, I have made some custom cut um, little cotton quilted rugs yes. and we have a um, sand mat um, and it's like six by six feet and um, this works great um, in the front of the trailer to keep the dirt out and away from your floor. We'd like to introduce you to our brand new 2015 320 boondock cabbie caboose. She uh, She's new to us. We uh, outfitted her with these uh, these nice shabby chic uh, pineapple retro awnings. Besides putting on this RV lock that has the, the automated touch pad, which has been great, one of the things that I did was I actually added a handle to the inside so that it, it, at night and on, the, on like those odd occasions that you have to slam the door, you no longer have to do that. You can just get a nice hold here and just pull the door closed. Um, I actually created a YouTube video for that on our web page or our YouTube channel, Wandering Us. So one of the things that we ended up doing was adding 
this uh, Yakima Road Shower for. It's seven gallons. It's pressurized to 60 pounds of pressure. It has both a hose on one side and a shower head on the other. So we're actually able to take uh, showers as well as hose off our kayaks or our feet or whatever before we get into the camper. A lot of times you want to come into the camper late at night, but you don't want to turn on all the lights and pull in the bugs and everything, but you're looking for something, in particular, maybe an adult beverage in the uh, in the fridge. So one of the things I found was this little light here that you can actually, has three different settings. Uh, what's nice is you can actually also aim this, but you're able to see right inside the refrigerator and pick your adult beverage, which have all fallen over from travel. Hi, so one of the new things that I've gotten this year for camping is the Omnia oven. And we learned about this from Mandy, and this is what it looks like. Um, it has a lid. We bought the silicone liner for it, and then we bought a rack to go under it. So I put the silicone liner on the rack, and then it has this part to it. The oven sits on that, and you put the lid on it, and you bake. And we've baked biscuits, and cakes, and brownies, and all of those fun kind of things. Hi, this is Myron Jacobson from St. Paul, Minnesota. Mosquitoes are pretty much the state bird here in Minnesota, and so attracting bugs is something I try very hard to avoid. Looks like everyone else's, but I have changed these particular light fixtures, which look very similar but yet different because this one has a red feature. Red has the wonderful effect of not ruining your vision. I love the Jackie Up, but when I am in my campsite and I remove the jack, it makes my 20-foot push-up fiberglass mast a perfect anchor to mount my omnidirectional antenna. And right underneath it, I have mounted a one-watt floodlight. It's LED, so you can put it on any color you like. It draws very little power. On the undercarriage of my camper, I have also mounted red running lights. And as I head around back to the galley, I have also made that same modification to the light. So I have a, both either a white or a red. And then I've also put some red LEDs up underneath here. And in 2018, we had an opportunity to get a ta-da. And we decided to make it tie-dye too and to have a hippie fleet. So last year, we were at U-Camp without it being tie-dyed. And that was one of the things we've done to uh, one of the mods we've done since we were at U-Camp. So since we're not going to be there this year, we'll show it to you. Uh, just do a walk around. So this is what our ta-da looks like now. This is what the inside of the camper looks like with quotes all over the walls. And this is the grateful bed. And there are lots of quotes down here. All over the walls. I have most everything covered except for at the front here. I have a little space to go and I'm getting a little more critical about what I put up there. One of my favorite mods that we've done this year is this little thing. Our son and grandson mounted a purple line quattro for us and it's a trailer mover that we just turn a key turn the remote on and with a joystick can move it in any direction so many of you owners have your screen doors in your cabs well the tag no screen door magma screen velcro and a lot of sewing and planning and you can make your own it's simply velcroed on the outside and then velcro and you simply snap it into place and now you can leave your door open can't guarantee bug proof completely but at least we have some cross ventilation that can happen favorite modification is our twin bed setup it's in our tab so we're going to show it to you in there <laughs> that's where we keep it <laughs> what it is is uh one by that i ripped to fit and actually it's velcroed to the bed rail frame and it has a metal leg attached to one side so it doesn't fall over while you're sleeping. And uh, it's got a four inch foam mattress on top. We roll our sleeping mm -hmm. bags up, store them in the back, and you can walk in and out between the beds, go to the back and get all your uh, storage, access all storage. We love it and we can get to all the spaces really super easy because you can walk back there. And so now we utilize all the areas. One of the first things we added was an outside outlet with GFI protection going into the 
camper, you see that I've put a breech inlay into the refrigerator. The galley has quite a few small improvements, such as racks for our coffee cups, and to the right we also have a rack for our wine glasses. We made a sink cover and a range cover to give her more workspace. We also replaced the faucet, and as you might notice, we've replaced the countertop itself with uh, Formica matching the exterior trim of the tab. Looking down, you also notice that on the cupboard door, we have got a spice rack. My wife is a gourmet cook. In addition, just for convenience, we added a little silverware drawer. And of course, I put a lagoon table mount and replaced the old fold up. The floor itself is African hardwood. My favorite mod that we made to our Tab 400 came out of necessity. After three nights of boondocking where we caught over 21 mice, we decided it was time to rodent proof the entire camper. So if you look around the underbelly of the camper, you'll notice a few holes like these where the mice can gain access. We went and sealed off every single one of those that we can find using gutter guard, spray foam, and a few other things. If you'd like to see a little bit more detail about what we did, be sure to check out the video on our YouTube channel. One of my favorite mods is when Kendrick insisted that we Mandy proof the camper by using the extra gutter guard to cover a couple of those uh, troublesome little nooks where you tend to drop things. Uh, for instance, behind the kitchen counter and also on each end of the bed where we have dropped things or okay, I have dropped things in both places. And the last thing we did when we were back home rodent proofing was we took the opportunity to update our kitchen cabinets. We do not have a microwave, so we have two cabinets, but they're very big and open. So we decided to build a very simple little shelf. You can see we are definitely not perfect in our construction, but this almost doubled the space we have. And we purposefully made the bottom part tall enough to hold um, a can or a jar. And then up top, we put little baskets, which is where we hold all our spices. And we can just slide them out when we need them. So um, I have a nice little comfy workstation. I have the things that inspire me, like my baby, my banjo, some recording equipment. Hey buddy, you can't play with that. There you go. <laughs> um, I have like my favorite books, some art supplies, and that's about it. Thanks for visiting. Hi everybody, it's Jen Grover. And this is my new 2021 Tab 320 Boondock Edition. I call her Maddie Ross, and I'm super excited to give everybody a chance to see it in person in the future. A lot of people ask me, what was the one feature that really made me want to upgrade? Well, the answer is, it's really not one feature. It's all of them. They have made so many changes since I bought my first Tab six years ago. So I hope you all get a chance to see it in person in the future, and that you're staying well and healthy. Take care, everybody. And now, let's hear from the only person I know who's better at dodging the camera than I am, CEO of New Camp, Scott Hubble. Hey guys, so we've reached the end of the last day at this year's New Camp. And it was another good one, wasn't it? We started the day off with some tips for women in camping. And frankly, gentlemen, I think we all could have learned something. Then, we went into a fabulous parade of dogs and ended off with you guys sharing your campsites with one another and with us. I wanna thank you for coming to our facility and spending time in this unique year of you camp. But I hope that you and many more can come back next year and visit us here in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Until then, take care. And finally, we didn't get to hear from this girl enough during virtual U camp, but Allison has a few more words to say for us. I hope everyone enjoyed sitting back and watching the video that Mandy Lee put together. I just want to tell everybody have a safe camping season and I'm going to miss you all terribly. Now, for the news that you have been waiting for, U camp 21 will be June 14th through the 18th. So I can't wait to see you next year and have a great camping season. Thanks, Allison. We can't wait to see all of our old friends and new friends at UCamp 2021 from June 14th to 18th. All right. Bye. See you later. You all be safe. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.
May 2020 be a little bit better than the beginning for all of you. We look forward to seeing all of you soon. Bye. Hope you're all well out there. Peace and love from Michigan. And uh, can't wait to see you next year. All right, bye for now. All right, bye. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Hope to see you all at the rally next year. And some of you maybe even sooner. Happy camping. We'll see you all in 2021. This will pass and I'll hope to see you all next year. So we look forward to seeing you next year and everybody else. Wish we were at U camp with everyone. Take care, everybody. Thanks for having this. Love you. Anyway, talk to you later. See you next year, 21. If they ever open the borders. <laughs> see you next year at U camp. Bye. <laughs> and uh, just know I've been praying for you and I love you all. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon. We're going to miss being together, but we can't wait for the next time. Take care. Love you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mandy Lee and Kendrick, for putting this together. I love all you guys. Take care. We are family. Well, there you have it. We can't thank everyone enough for helping us to make Virtual U Camp a possibility. From the attendees to all of the wonderful people at New Camp, um, we've not just made friends at the U Camp Trailer Rally, we've made family. And we love each and every one of you. We love the advice, the help, the support you give us and everyone else. And um, it's just gonna make next year all the sweeter. So we can't wait to see you next year and thank you again for all of your help. So here's to another year of anticipation. <laughs> Love and light. next year.